first of all, I'd like, just like to thank Gary and Peter before they have to leave uh, for reminding us of the high quality of civic engagement in Southwest Ontario. Um, something that is one of the great defining features of this region, something that I've appreciated from a number of vantage points over the increasing number of decades that I've been coming to Southwest Ontario, but just for reminding us of that today by your style and your presence here. So let me just say thank you for coming, thank you for opening this, and now if I, you'll indulge me for seven minutes, as it will be exact, oh, seven minutes and 49 seconds, That's a, that was a mistake, that somebody goofed in that, giving me that extra 49 seconds. Uh, but in the seven minutes that, that I, and 40, 40 seconds if I stop talking about the time, uh, but just to tell you how happy I am to be here, how more happy I am to see all of you here, and just to say a few things to set the stage, just people wanted me to set the stage a little bit today, I'll come back at a couple of points to try and just do some summaries and moving along, but, but this is really my only chance to say these things, I even have a PowerPoint which I'm not going to give you. There's a lot going on in the world right now, and it's not all as pretty as the techno-utopians who are many of my best friends, including some of you in this room whose eyes I will avoid at this moment, think it is. There's a lot of challenges out there which require that we get the best and the brightest into politics as much as possible over the next 10 years, not just in Canada, but around the world. But there is something going on that really does have an impact on what we are talking about and what we are doing here, and whether it's the... Uh, Maidan, Euro, Ukrainian movement, or Am Admi, the uh, anti-corruption movement in India, of Ushahidi, the Swahili word for what has become the anti-corruption software global open source device, which most people under the age of 30 around the world know about. They have in common one thing. They are a fundamental change in the world to a digital age that is going to have not only a new form of politics, but a new form of economics and a new form of innovation, a new way form that people form together in groups, in social networks, to innovate and to make changes. I might even add about a friend of mine in Quebec last week, uh, because I think Philippe Guillard is a part of that uh, global movement, and as people in Ontario get to know him, and as a private note, but as people in Ontario get to know him, they will understand that there's something more at foot here in terms of the way in which people are looking at the relationship between technology, politics, and global societies. And that this is a this state, many statements were made last week in Montreal and the rest of Quebec. Um, so then to the question from Vera of why Waterloo. Ferriden said something that was extremely astute, exceptionally astute. We're extremely good here at more than one thing. Uh, my slide was that I could take you to places in Germany and show you some manufacturing innovation and uh, incineration technologies that are state of the art in terms of converting waste into energy in an environmentally clean way. But I wouldn't be able to show you the energy of the digital entrepreneurs that you can see in Communitech and Velocity around Waterloo. And I can take you, and many of you can take yourselves, to Silicon Valley and to San Francisco and see some of the most interesting applications of digital media to the way in which new companies and new products get developed. But you would not be able to see the same caliber of investment in clean tech and green technologies that we can see right here in southwest Ontario and indeed in Vancouver, as Wall will talk about tomorrow, uh, as Wall will talk about later today, uh, and as um, uh, you will see uh, around uh, Northern Europe and, and, and Germany. We do them both here. We innovate as a state of mind, not as a sectoral expertise. And I think that that is something that becomes part of the University of Waterloo's brand and the Waterloo ecosystem brand. I'm very sensitive in all my friendships in Waterloo that we talk about the Waterloo ecosystem, that you go around from the Perimeter Institute to this phenomenal building at quantum computing, you go around what Mike Lazaridis calls Quantum Valley, and you go to Communitech and you go to Velocity and you see all these things that are part of a particularly unique ecosystem, 
but it is an ecosystem which depends on a glacier that is able to produce for waters which lead to the rivers that I have just named. And the glacier is the University of Waterloo. Because without the University of Waterloo being able to attract people from all over the world, channel the knowledge through all the faculty and all the programs that exist at this university, uh, it's a pretty fragile ecosystem. But it is an ecosystem. And it is something where things happen because we're extremely good at more than one thing. Um, I think that part of what we have done right, and I say we, I just do that. I mean, I kind of live here. My card now has Waterloo on it. Montreal, Toronto, Waterloo uh, on it, which is a nice innovation in and of itself. What we do right here is to think about innovation as a form of commercialization. But the two do go together. Often we forget that in English-speaking Canada. But innovation does not just happen without the engagement of a private sector. Um, it's very simple. This is a discussion about commercialization of technology, which is one I promise always to walk out on. I hope nobody gets offense at this. But it's one you commercialize technology if you incent people. You give people incentives to work together. If you don't give people incentives to work together, and there are 562 people doing work on pancreatic cancer, then you're not going to get the best outcome in commercialization. It's, a, it's either horizontal or vertical. And so a lot of the discussions we have about commercialization are really quite straightforward. But Waterloo just does it intuitively. As, you know, it is the secret source. It's the way things just get done here. And there's another ingredient, and I'm just going to say this for, for, for 20 seconds and then move on to just the wrap-up here. The thing about Southwest Ontario that I always like to point out. In Middlesex County, before he moved to Manitoba, a great Canadian politician called Sifton, Clifford Sifton was born. Sifton changed Canadian politics by designing immigration as a strategic economic tool. 1905. A, a hundred years later, the Orange Revolution had a lot of Ukrainian Canadians and great-grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren of, of Ukrainians who came to Canada because Clifford Sifton wanted to settle the West uh, and saw immigration as an economic instrument back in Kiev doing the Orange Revolution. The world works in mysterious ways, but there are patterns here about those who seek to explore, to travel, to immigrate, the most entrepreneurial act a person can do in their lifetime is to leave their home and go to a different place. And that's where we, Waterloo, we Canada, we Ontario, have this unique benefit. Tamil, Somali, Toronto. There's a film being done by a young Tamil and a young Somali friend of mine. You know, Tamil about their stories in Toronto. Tamil, Somali, Toronto is a story. A hundred years from now, it'll be a very familiar story to your great-grandchildren, my great-great-grandchildren. So we're here today to figure this all out. We figure out what, what makes Waterloo a global innovation hub, how we can continue to develop that and grow that, to build on the networks we established last year with the C100 group in Silicon Valley, which is a great source of, of, of relationship for Waterloo and for people in this room, and to go on to new topics, topics which will start today, uh, what kind of uh, corporate venturing do, does the University of Waterloo need to do? What kind of relationships do we need with Siemens Ventures, Samsung Ventures, Qualcomm Ventures, 3M Ventures, Nike Ventures, which are now part of the We Are All Innovators generation? Secondly, how do we fit into, I never like the word mafia, but everybody uses it, how do we fit into the maple syrup mafia? Uh, the people who want to build great Canadian companies, and I say a very nice thing about Tom Jenkins, who I love and adore and admire more than he knows, and I hate having to say that, but, but it is true because he represents that, which is to build a great Canadian brand. How do we do it now? We know how he did it between 1995 and 2014. How do we do it from 2014 through to 2030? We want to talk about more innovations, as Minister Goodyear was talking about, in, 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 in manufacturing. And I want to talk about the post-Snowden world. I hate it that any single individual, especially Snowden, gets an, an, an age named for him. But, uh, but we are living in a very different world now. And it requires different strategies, different ways of doing things. And those are the kind of things we've tried to structure into the agenda. We've tried to encourage our superb social media team to steer people towards tweeting about and thinking about. So that as Ferridan said, this is not a standalone event, but part of a continuity. 
With that in mind, I've said enough, and I only went slightly over, and now I even have a greater pleasure than talking to you, which is a pleasure to uh, introduce Whitney Rockley. Uh, Whitney is going to give a keynote on the Internet of Things, which is something that we really, really did appreciate, and we wanted to get uh, off to a start where we were thinking about the things that are, are significant for the 21st century and where the University of Waterloo has a particular role to play because of the kind of companies and, and, and research programs that go on around here. I will try to set a trend of not giving an introduction that says everything about about all of our guests and starting with Whitney. We have these little devices that you have in your pocket to tell you everything, including her Twitter feed. But from McRock uh, Capital, uh, one of the, the, the leading, f with, with experience in investing in Europe as well as in Canada and North America, and someone I'm really, really happy to have here and, uh, and look forward to hearing more about and building more of a relationship into the University of Waterloo. So